Hello and welcome to Outside Xbox. You're watching Show of the Week. I'm Andy. And I'm Mike. This week with so many new games out, I had a hard time choosing what to play. Oh man, me too. I mean, there's Dishonored 2, obviously. Right. I still need to finish Titanfall 2. Sure do. Uh, there's Battlefield 1, Infinite Warfare, Watch Dogs 2. Yep. So what did you end up going with? It's a challenge for your hands and your mind. Mike, there's loads of good actual games out at the moment. You should play one of them. Ugh, fine. Maybe I'll find time to squeeze in whatever game we're talking about this week. Well, actually, it's three games. Oh, what? That's right, Mike, because it's Assassin's Creed The Ezio Collection, a remastered bundle bringing to Xbox One and PS4 all the Assassin's Creed games starring Ezio Auditore da Firenze. Man, I miss saying that name. Ezio Auditore de la la la. That's it. So, that means three games, beginning with Assassin's Creed 2, in which Ezio starts out as a cocksure young braggart who's super keen to tell people he's doing it with their sister. Your sister seemed quite satisfied with the handling I gave her earlier. <laughs> By the end of the game, though, our boy Ezio is, well, still kind of a braggart, but also the hottest new member of the Assassin Order, pivotal to the unravelling of a Templar conspiracy. This life, it chose me. The second of Ezio's greatest hits is Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, in which you conquer Rome, one district at a time, with the help of the game's new addition, the titular Brotherhood. That's a squad of assassins you train up and send on missions, or summon to do your dirty work when you're out and about in Rome. So handy. I intend to write a book about you one day. If you do, Machiavelli, make it short. Last of the trilogy is Assassin's Creed Revelations, which follows an older Ezio as he travels to Constantinople in search of Altair's memories. This task he accomplishes mostly by whizzing around on zip lines and building loads of bombs. Show him what it means to cross the Assassin. You also get all the single-player DLC for the first three games, including the Bonfire of the Vanities DLC for the first game, which gave you a whole new section of Florence to explore, the Da Vinci Disappearance DLC from the second game, in which Ezio turns sleuth to get his old pal Leonardo back, and the Lost Archive DLC from Revelations, which delivers some absolutely crucial plot points about Desmond's close friend and potential squeeze, Lucy Stillman. Remember her? If that's not enough to fill your every waking hour until 2017, Mike, the Ezio Collection package also comes with the short films Assassin's Creed Embers and the three-part Assassin's Creed lineage to round off Ezio's story. I am Giovanni Auditore, and like my ancestors before me, I am an assassin. One thing the collection doesn't include, however, is the multiplayer mode from Brotherhood and Revelations, in a decision described by pundits in the outside Xbox office as lame and understandable but lame. As you'd expect, the games in the collection have been overhauled graphically. And this is mostly for the good unless, for example, that random odd-looking NPC chap shows up with his odd-looking face. You'd be unlucky though, and for the most part you'll be looking at the much more flatteringly remastered face of Florence's stabbiest son. Which, I mean, who doesn't enjoy that? On the other hand, the ways the Assassin's Creed series has evolved and advanced over the years since Ezio's heyday can make returning to older games occasionally jarring in how much slower old-school climbing and free-running feels compared to the zippy traversal of Assassin's Creed Syndicate. That being said, the Ezio collection is a no-brainer if you miss these games the first time around, because Ezio's story is a stone-cold classic and Ezio remains one of the most roguishly lovable video game protagonists of all time. Plus, it lets you relive the series' greatest moment in full HD. It's a me, Mario! Finally! This had better be in the movie, Fassbender. It's all the games with Ezio in, and I, I don't know, that's a lot of Ezio. That's good though, isn't it? Ezio's brilliant. Is he? I mean, it's been a while and we've had Edward Kenway and Jacob and Evie Fry since then, and they're great. <laughs> Sounds like someone needs reminding how great Ezio is. That's you. Oh. Alright, Mike, have a seat and focus up. Because as much as we love complex, warm-hearted hero Ezio Auditore de Firenze, Hey, that is fun to say. There is a horde of 15th century socialites, courtesans and attractive bookshop owners who love him just as much. These admirers are queuing around the block to make time with the man they call the Italian Stallion, the Florentine love machine, the wife-stealing, death-dealing Ezio Auditore, so you had better get in line. You would also better beware spoilers for the Assassin's Creed games with Ezio in. She's beautiful. Okay, then go talk to her. Sassy Renaissance woman about town Christina Vespucci had a thing for Ezio her whole life, and who can blame her after their unforgettable first meeting? What? What? Classic Ezio. He pulled it back though, and so she defied her family's wishes and embarked on a forbidden romance with the young assassin-to-be, built on a solid foundation of him doing parkour up to her bedroom window. May I come in? 
fine, but only for a minute. A minute is all I need. Indeed. Well, wait, uh, that came out wrong. Such was the charm of the kiss-grabbing, air-stabbing Ezio that Christina carried a torch for him even after he menaced her family-approved fiancé, made out with her in an alley, and then ran off to have assassin adventures for several years. He's fine. He'll make a good husband. I made sure of it. What? Oh, cheers, Ets. I'll see you in eight years for another snog against a wall then, shall I? Maybe at a carnival in Venice where you wear a mask and pretend to be my husband. That'll be cute. It's you. What the hell are you doing here? How dare you? Christina, it's all right. All right? I haven't seen you in eight years. And yet, still more years later in the DLC known as the Bonfire of the Vanities, when Christina Vespucci meets her tragic end in the historical event known as the Bonfire of the Vanities, she reveals she never stopped carrying a torch for our boy Ezio. I don't have a joke here because actually this was mega sad. I wish we could have had a second chance. Buongiorno, merhaba, please come in. Someone else we can presume was pretty keen on Ezio was Sofia Sartor, the woman he married then had two children and grew old with. It's easy to see why with chat up line game this strong. When I was your age, my interests were, were mainly salve. Smooth, Ezio. Sofia owns a bookshop in Constantinople and is really, really into books. Luckily at this point, so is Ezio, as he believes they will lead him to more discs containing the memories of Altair. Still, for all Sofia knows, this charming silver fox who keeps turning up at her bookstore loves rare and ancient books as much as she does, and he really does come in handy when randos are bothering her in the street. Is this man bothering you, Sofia? Excuse me, Messere, but the lady and I are... Oh! Oh, il diavolo in persona! Stay back! I mean, sure, there's the occasional kidnapping and near hanging to deal with, but the course of true love never did run smooth, right? He won't trouble you anymore. I took care of it. Caterina Sforza was the Countess of Forli and Imola, and yet another person to be caught in Ezio Auditore's web of cheekbones and lip scars and exactly the right amount of stubble. Madonna. Oh, you're good. The ladies must like you. Their relationship doesn't start off super romantically, with you being given the mission objective, help the screaming woman get back to the docks. But they really warm to each other during this 15 second boat ride and by the mission's end, you could cut the sexual tension with a hidden blade. Should you ever find yourself in the city of Forley, it would be my pleasure to welcome you. Jeez, get a room guys. Oh, they did. In which Katerina could strip down to her definitely historically accurate underpants there. Katerina was possessed of a fierce spirit and a rebellious nature which led to her and Ezio becoming allies on the battlefield as well as in the bedroom. She also holds the world record for quickest getting dressed. Merda. I have to find Mario and rally the troops. My men are in the courtyard. Seven seconds. Still never been topped. Oh, Ezio Auditore! I... I didn't expect to see you again. What with all that's happened... Ah, where are my manners? Welcome back! It's not just the 15th century babes that thought Ezio was the greatest thing since Slice for Caccia. Ezio, what is this? We've known each other a long time, Leonardo. If I can't trust you, there is nobody. Ezio's trusted friend and provider of dangerous inventions, Leonardo da Vinci, was also a big fan of the dashing Florentine noble, as we find in all the top quality Renaissance bro hugs. Adorable. Thank you for everything, my oldest friend. That being said, Leo, next time you want to give us a gift that shows how much you care, we'll accept a nice priceless original da Vinci painting instead of a deadly proto hang glider invention of yours. Or instead of the world's worst foot-powered wooden battle tank, also invented by you. Other than that, Leonardo da Vinci's support for Team Ezio is a perfect example of how everyone thought Ezio was the best. Except maybe the Borgias, and Templars, and wandering minstrels with lutes. Minstrels from Italia? I am going to enjoy this. But hey, the lute manufacturers of Renaissance Italy loved him. Just walk right past me. Sixteen? No. They didn't tell you my name? 
When you're as handsome as Ezio Auditore, it's selfish to keep all your handsomeness for just one woman, thought Ezio Auditore, probably, which is why he had so many other dalliances during his long and eventful life. These apparently included the unnamed mothers of some illegitimate children. Yes, Ezio had more kids than just Flavia and Marcello, his children with Sofia, which explains the existence of Clay here, a direct descendant of Ezio, who is also known as Subject 16. I guess all the good looks went to Desmond, hey Clay? I mean, I think all the looks went to Desmond full stop, since Desmond looks exactly like Ezio, whereas Clay is equally descended from Ezio, but looks like he should be reliving the genetic memories of Gary Boosie and Biff Tannen. Look at me now! Still, his very existence goes to show that yet more people were really into Ezio. So, get with the program, Mike. <laughs> Who are you, Miss Ere? Only the most interesting man in your life. Ah, oh, che presuntuoso. Now it's time to see what's written in the comments, or you can have what's in the mystery box. Mm -hmm. Mystery box, mystery box. Oh, wow. Jeez. Uh, okay, C comments then. First up, your comments on last week's show, all about Watch Dogs 2 and the things video games taught us about hacking. Episodic adventure game Dreamfall Chapters reassures us that our data is safe with the advanced future incarnation of the internet known as The Wire, as long as no hacker has the energy, persistence and physical coordination to walk between several locations. Commenter Eddie Johnston is excited, saying, This marks a pretty important moment, because it's the first time anyone has actually mentioned Dreamfall Chapters on the internet. And now the second! Dreamfall Chapters. Third! Commenter Jess Keen, meanwhile, observes the following. Bioshock taught me that hacking is basically plumbing. Then again, since Rapture leaked, maybe their hackers weren't all that great. Well, that explains so much about Rapture. So what happens when you let hackers do your plumbing for your underwater city? Overwatch's latest purplest hero is Sombra, a world-famous hacker who can breach your enemy's systems, health pack pickups, and Torbjorn's precious turret. In your face, Torbjorn. And now hold everything, though, because commenter Adam Thompson is bringing the big issues. He says, I'm still annoyed that Sombra doesn't wear a sombrero. No worries, Adam. Never say we don't do anything for you. Next up, your comments on this video about the times video games predicted the future with spooky accuracy, rivaling Nostradamus or that one psychic octopus who could tell you the football scores. Global politics, scientific breakthroughs, the results of major sporting events, all have been foretold by these otherwise ordinary looking video games all of which take up far less space on the shelf than a crystal ball. Commenter Charles and His World says that Deus Ex predicted everything and is still ahead of its time. Everything? Yep. Did it predict I was going to do this? Yep. Oh. You see, back in the mid-1990s, mapping the human genome was still seen as a pretty sci-fi concept and the possible cure for all human ills. But bear in mind this was an era in which we were still celebrating the creation of stuffed crust pizza. Most of the comments after that were about pizza, to be honest. Great! Such as this one from Thomas Sampson who says, Are we not still celebrating the creation of stuffed crust pizza? When did the world lose its heart? I don't know, I think it's more like the world congested its heart after eating too much stuffed crust pizza. Pizza pulls it back though according to this comment from some admittedly not Roman dude who says, Watching this video whilst eating dinner and having to look down at my hot dog stuffed crust pizza and realise this video also predicted my future. I knew pizza wouldn't let us down. You're the real MVP. Most valuable pizza. Mm -hmm. Finally this week, your comments on this video of Jane and me infiltrating the creepy Adamire Institute to take down the crown killer in Dishonored 2. Oh, Emily. Okay. All right, chalk up another few deaths on account of being distracted um, and surprised. Just don't surprise me, guys. Loads of comments about your violent, chaotic playstyle, I expect. Actually, most of the comments were about your playstyle, Jane. Oh, you mean my non lethal, highly adaptable panther like playstyle? Right, as commenter Ron Lund says. So, guys, don't ever surprise Jane unless you're into that stabby, stabby thing. Right, like I say, highly adaptable. And because commenter you never know Ash Therion says Jane's friends threw her a surprise birthday party once. I'd tell you how it went, but sadly there were no survivors. That was one time. And commenter Zachary Capoli says You couldn't just let it alone, and now you're on fire. What a fantastic name for Jane's memoirs. It's a working title. You did this to yourself. <laughs> you couldn't just let it alone, and now you're on fire. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, it probably cost me a whole load of chaos. All right, I'm going to head back in. I'll see you in a bit. OK. Chapter 10. That's when I knew Mike had to go. 
That's it for this week's show, but we've got just enough time to check in with Outside Extra and see what they're up to. What? Is this now? You didn't say, you didn't say a time. Just say the thing, guys. Um, please uh, like, like and subscribe. Like the video. Oh, you have to have a convoluted reason for doing it. Uh, oh. Like the video and Andy will buy us ice cream. Yeah, that'd That's be a good. Better reason than that. Uh, he'll buy us a... burgers. But yeah, burgers and ice cream. The same reason, but with a different food. He'll, what what, he'll what take food us is to the... Thought Park. All right, just forget the whole thing. I want to go on Nemesis. No, no that's Stealth. Alton Towers. Stealth. Nemesis Inferno at Thorpe Park. Yeah, Nemesis Inferno. I want to go on that. Love those guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. All right, time to clear some of this backlog. Oh, cool. What are you going to play first? Well, I thought I might see how far I can Frisbee this Mafia 3 box. Do you want to go?